What is up guys, Politics Gaming here, and this is the third time that I have had to record this video because OBS doesn't want to work with me right now. So uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, Super Power 3 Explanation trailer. This is going to be probably the last one that I'm going to make because next week on October 6th, I will be playing Super Power 3 for the very first time. And I'm not joking whenever I say that. October 6th, they have given me permission to stream it to my channel on October 6th of that morning. So guys, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. If you guys are new, if you guys are excited for Super Power 3, I'll be streaming on this channel all day that day. So do not miss that live stream. It's going to be the biggest one in my channel's history yet. So uh, just go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll see you guys uh, after this trailer. It's the economy, stupid. In Superpower 3, the economic health of their nation is probably the most important variable for any political leader to consider. Leaders must balance the budget and carefully manage resources. That said, just like in the real world, these are extremely complex tasks. Resources in Superpower 3 are categorized into three sectors. The three sectors include one, primary, production. 2. Secondary, Resource Transformation and 3. Tertiary, everything that encompasses goods and services, sometimes referred to as the country's GDP. The economy of a country is measured by GDP. The total sum of the production of these 22 sectors represent the gross domestic product of a country or its entire economy. These sectors are also where citizens work so any unemployed adult citizen is someone who doesn't fit in them. These sectors are physically located in the regions of your country and are based on real-life data. So a richer region will have a stronger production than a poorer one. Some sectors, like agriculture, need arable lands to be able to exist, so difficult to develop in barren or desert regions. Like any other elements of the game, the data of Superpower 3 is based on the real world. So some countries will be lacking in various sectors, and others will be overflowing much past their needed amounts for their domestic uses. This is where trading occurs. You can sell the surplus. A nation's economy might produce or buy where it is lacking to provide your population the goods needed for its development and happiness. But not every country will be able to produce and buy everything. Some of the world's poorest countries don't have everything they need, and there exists a tendency for rich countries to trade amongst themselves and often forget about the smaller, poorer countries. It is your job as head of state to change that and try to develop your economy to its potential. Just like some sectors require arable land, all sectors require manpower or citizens to produce. If 100% of your population is working, then increasing production will be hard. Opening up your nation to immigration will bring new workforce quickly, but opens up new challenges for you. How to make the life of your new citizens pleasant and to ensure they find their place in your society. You can check more about this game mechanic in our demography trailer. Also, your population will not always have sufficient schooling to develop the required manpower in some sectors. You can't take an engineer, for instance, and rebrand them a doctor all of a sudden. The other component of your economy is the budget, where you must try to generate surplus money in order to perform certain actions. Difficult choices might have to be made to cut certain programs, or certain sectors of your country in order to prioritize others. Long-term gains or short-term needs? In Superpower 3, as in reality, the economic aspects of geopolitics are often the basis and ultimate outcome of decisions. Very interesting trailer for Superpower 3, but uh, let's go ahead and start to analyze it here. So we'll go ahead and start it off. It's the economy, stupid. 
Now, if you guys do not get that reference, then you are way too young. In Superpower 3, the economic health of their nation is probably the most important variable for any political leader to consider. Leaders must balance the budget and carefully manage resources. That said, just like in the real world, these are extremely complex tasks. Resources in Superpower 3 are categorized into three sectors. The three sectors include one, primary, production. Two, secondary, resource transformation. And three, tertiary, everything that encompasses goods and services, sometimes referred to as the country's GDP. So essentially, the, uh, the, what the takeaway from that is that in Superpower 3, we have the primary, we have the secondary, and we have the tertiary sectors. Essentially, what these mean, it is, it, it's Economics 101. Um, if you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about economics, especially in the gameplay realm, uh, go ahead and watch my economic tutorial, which I will link right here. So essentially, the um, just in case you guys don't know what these are, the primary sector, the secondary sector, and the tertiary sector are the three levels of the economy. These are going to be the tiers of every country in superpower three so primary secondary and tertiary the primary sector is essentially um like it's it's your basic resources it's your natural resources it's your food resources it's everything like that so your food your energy all of that comes from your primary your secondary is essentially your industrial and your manufacturing processes it looks like you only have three of them in Superpower 3, at least starting off uh, whenever this video was recorded. It's like a week from release, um, essentially. So you have your production and then you have your industrial. And then you in tertiary, tertiary is your services. It's your, it's your finished goods. It's your cell phones. It's your computers. Um, it's everything that is completely finished and everything. So in services, you have your healthcare, you have your education, you have your looks like tourism, I believe. And then you have your, you have your luxury goods, you have your research goods. One, primary production. Two, secondary resource transformation. And three, tertiary. Everything that encompasses goods and services, sometimes referred to as the country's GDP. And that's actually... Um, what it looks like, what we're looking at right here, is that each of these numbers, so you see 28 billion, 42 billion, 19, 47, um, all of this accounts for your GDP. So you can actually see that there is a surplus and deficit in these sectors, but then it looks like that, I don't know if these are our GDPs or if these are just the, uh, the, the surplus that we have. Maybe it's an overall surplus that we have um, where it says 163 billion. So it'll be a very interesting to see how detailed the economy is in Superpower 3. That's that's essentially what I am very curious about. Um, unfortunately, like in Superpower 2, the economy was never that advanced. It's not as advanced as Power and Revolutions is. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether anything has changed in Superpower 3. Um, whether the economy is more advanced um, but even then like superpower it's not an economic simulator it's not it's not a game in which it was uh advanced that much i mean you had an inflation tab you had your interest rate and then you had uh just a couple other metrics and then you had your budget tab it was always through your budget tab and then your sectors tab but then again like it was never that advanced in superpower two. So I kind of wouldn't expect superpower three to be that more advanced unless they really wanted to kind of like run it out of the park with it. Um, but I'm not making that many expectations off of it. The economy of a country is measured by GDP. The total sum of the- I like how you had to hear him gasp or air right as he said that production of these 22 sectors represent the gross domestic product of a country or its entire economy. These sectors are also where citizens work. So any unemployed adult citizen is someone who doesn't fit in them. These sectors are physically located in the regions of your country. And so that's essentially uh, how it worked in Superpower 2 in which um, each each region of a country, so it was like Brandenburg, or it was Alsace-Lorraine, or it was all of these different regions in each of the countries in the world. 
every single resource that you have is based in those things off of per, uh, like in super power two it was off of a percentage of like your population and how your country was spread out and everything like that and then so the resources were kind of like spread accordingly depending on how big your country is and i think in some places it was actually kind of like so oil would you know come from california and texas actually yeah in superpower 2 all of it it was all like based on your highest population so in places like california uh texas new york pennsylvania a lot of your oil would come from there and then places like new mexico it wouldn't come from there um even though that's literally where it comes from in the united states so it's kind of weird how that worked in superpower 2 and are based on real life data so a richer region will have a stronger production than a poorer one some sectors like agriculture need arable lands to be able to exist so difficult to develop in barren or desert regions so that's actually something that uh that I've been able to uh, ascertain from uh, Super Power 3 is that essentially, um, so in the cereal sector, for example, um, essentially what it does is that um, you're only allowed to produce a certain amount for a certain sector or throughout your entire economy. So unemployment is capped. If you run out of unemployment, you cannot invest more into your sector is what for, is, I believe is what he's trying to say. So just as he said, your, your, your population is only allowed to do a certain amount of things. If you're not educated, you're not going to be able to become a service-based economy. But then you, whenever it comes to like food or something like that, so like cereals, uh, plants, um, etc. So essentially, you can only go by the amount of land that you have in your country. If you start to run out of arable land, you cannot make more cereals or agrarian based uh, products. So that's going to be very interesting to be able to exist. So difficult to develop in barren or desert regions. Like any other elements of the game, the data of Superpower 3 is based on the real world. So some countries will be lacking in various sectors and others will be overflowing much past their needed amounts for their domestic uses. So essentially what he is saying right there in Superpower 2, a lot of you guys never played Superpower 2. You guys weren't there. I've been playing it since 2012. Some people have been playing it since day one in 2004. Essentially in Superpower 2, there was a bug that was called a Tarki. A Tarki was essentially... Uh, in, in 1933 Germany, after you know who took power, um, he enacted a policy in which he wanted Germany to become self-sufficient off of every single resource that they needed. They wanted to make sure that if there was ever a blockade or anything like that, they they were going to be okay and didn't have some sort of, you know, 1918, 1919 revolution as they saw after World War One. So a Tarki is essentially a bug in which every country in Superpower 2 would become self-sufficient off of every single resource and wouldn't need to trade with anyone else. So essentially, in the beginning of the game, in, like in multiplayer or something like that, you'd be able to make $2 trillion, $3 trillion as the United States just off of trade alone. And that's going to be like one of the best, best ways you're going to be able to finance your economy. And trade was essentially one of the best ways that you could finance your economy later on in the game as your your economy grew and everyone else's economy grew everyone became richer everyone became more self-sufficient they wouldn't need to trade goods on the international market therefore trade would start to slump down over time so it, it's basically like it was basically like peak oil in superpower 2 in which um every single resource would then become just a uh, very finite to even be able to export on the market and then everyone else's trade volume would just go almost down to zero or to zero so i think this is essentially what they're trying to do in superpower three this is where trading occurs you can sell the surplus a nation's economy might produce or buy where it is lacking to provide your population the goods needed for its development and happiness. So this is actually a very interesting one right here. So this is for your nationalized trades. Um, so essentially privatizing it um, allows you to tax the sector. It's kind of like how we had it in Superpower 2 in which um, a privatized sector, you can only tax it. 
and then at a, a nationalized sector, you were actually able to import a certain amount, um, however much you needed or something like that. Basically, you kind of had a little bit more uh, control over that sector. Essentially, it's kind of the same thing, except you can actually enact your own trade policy with other countries. So you can nationalize the sector, so like cereals, for example. And then you can say, okay, I want to have a pro-Western trade policy with the West. So I'm going to trade with Poland, Japan, the United States, Switzerland, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then in, uh, you can say, okay, I don't want to trade with places like Russia, China, India, uh, etc. So that's actually going to be very interesting to see what kind of trade policies other countries can make with other countries and what other uh, policies players can actually go after. Um, so, you know, you can you can see right here we're importing 16 percent of our resource from China, which is accounting for two hundred seventy eight million dollars. So maybe you can save two hundred seventy eight million dollars and say, OK, I'm not going to trade with China anymore and hit that trash button. So I'm gonna. It's gonna be very interesting to see what kind of policies people can uh, come up with in Superpower Three. But not every country will be able to produce and buy everything. Some of the world's poorest countries don't have everything they need, and there exists a tendency for rich countries to trade amongst themselves. So just like I said before, this is more of a attack against the Atarki bug to make sure that players do not run into the Atarki bug in the future. And that's actually, you can actually see that in the devlogs before in which they did talk about the Atarki bug. And often forget about the smaller, poorer countries. It is your job as head of state to change that and try to develop your economy to its potential. Just like some sectors require arable land, all sectors require manpower or citizens. So a very interesting thing right here. So you can actually see over on the top right, we see global market. So you can actually see that as soon as he was nationalizing it, um, essentially you could see, watch, watch, watch right here. So he can make it illegal or he can nationalize it. And you can see that the public and private, this is, it seems like the global market is dominated by a nationalized sector or a privatized sector. So you can see what, uh, what the rest of the world is doing with that resource. And it even shows you how much this resource is worth on the international markets. Deuce. If 100% of your population is working, then increasing production will be hard. Opening up. So just like he said right there, so unemployment should actually be capped in the superpower three, in which if you want to, so you see that unemployment rate right there, maybe if you have a 1% unemployment rate, it's going to be a lot harder for you to invest in your economy and make sure that you, that, uh, and, and, and grow a certain sector because, um, unemployment is going to be capped at a certain percentage. And then it's going to be a lot harder for you to employ people into that sector. So if you're employing everyone in your services sector, for example, you're not going to be able to say, okay, hey, um, come back to the to the uh, agrarian sector, the primary sector, and then uh, produce all this food, et cetera, et cetera. So just like he said before, making someone a doctor and then trying to turn around and make them a farmer, it's probably going to be impossible for you to do that. Population is working then increasing production will be hard. Opening up your nation to immigration will bring new... And actually, I believe that's probably what that modify investment feature is going to be for you. So essentially, we have unemployment and then we have uh, investment. So I think what the, the modify investment is essentially going to say, okay, let's, let's invest $20 billion into our meat sector. And then in the meat sector, it gradually kind of brings unemployment down over time, or it brings it down immediately. I don't really know yet. And then so essentially, you can uh, invest into the sector, it brings down unemployment, but then again, it's going to be a difficulty of, you know, trying to make someone that's in the uh, uh, tertiary sector come back to the primary sector. So it's going to be very difficult depending on what your starting country is. Deuce. If 100% of your population is working, then increasing production will be hard. Opening up your nation to immigration will bring new workforce quickly, but opens up new challenges for you. How to 
but that's going to be very interesting as well whether uh, uh, uh immigration how important immigration will really be in your game so basically trying to focus on your own national production or uh, maybe it's a political promise or something like that and then you can kind of close the borders or you can open them so that's more of like a workforce control in superpower three instead of you know a political control is the immigration closing and opening the borders how realistic that is i don't know but it seems to be more of a kind of like workforce economic control now to make the life of your new citizens pleasant and to ensure they find their place in your society you can check more about this game mechanic in our demography trailer. Also, your population will not always have sufficient schooling to develop the required manpower in some sectors. You, so you can actually see right here in the top left that we see education. So we see average years of education in whatever country we're playing as right here is uh, 13. So we can see that we have our, our average and then we have uh, the world average right here with this little blue icon. Um, and then we have GDP per capita, we see our average, and then the world average right here. So I, I, I didn't notice this in the demography trailer. Um, I don't think I noticed it. Maybe I did. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see um, how you can increase this over time. And most likely the way you're going to do that is through the education tab. Maybe there's a couple other tabs that you can mess with to increase this even further. You can't take an engineer, for instance, and rebrand them a doctor all of a sudden. The other component of your economy is the budget, where you must try to generate surplus money in order to perform certain actions. Difficult choices might have to be made to cut certain programs or certain sectors of your country in order to prioritize others. So just as I said before, so this is the uh, expense tab. So it almost looks pretty much like uh, what Superpower 2 was, was going after, just, you know, with a different interface. Um, and just like I said before, Superpower Superpower 2 never had that in-depth of an economic tab. And I am never really expected Superpower 3 to uh, have that more of an advanced <laughs> economic tab. It, it would have really surprised me if they if they were to have done that. Um, but it's it, I think it's where they're going after the same kind of thing whenever it comes to the budget. I think the biggest thing that they've really changed in, uh, in Superpower 3 is the sectors tab and how all of that works. And so you essentially have your own trading menu and everything, but it looks like that the budget tab has not really changed as much in Superpower 3. So you can see we have um, the same expenses, except that research is split into civilian and military research, um, which will be interesting. I wanna see what civilian research can really do, see if there's anything else that we can uh, essentially make uh, better in our country through civilian research. So I want to I see how exactly it does that. And I'm obviously ho hovering over them so you can see government, this helps lower corruption and improves stability. Um, telecommunications, this will imp improve internet infrastructure and access, probably increase your services tab as well. Um, education, raising this post will generate a more educated population. The more educated they are, the more stable they will be. But the but the more use they will make of the internet and the more resources they will need. Also, the more educated educated a population is, the more it moves professionally from first tier economic sectors toward the second and third tiers. So essentially, uh, depending on the current mock-up of your economy and your future goals, investing in more into education might not necessarily be the best choice. So just like I, I think I said this uh, at the beginning, uh, essentially, the economy is split up into three different tiers. It's your primary tier, it's your secondary tier, and your tertiary tier. So every country in the world is going to be among these tiers. So if you're playing as Angola and you want to make it a industrial power, not a service power, then you have to increase your education tab accordingly, and then your resources will start to change according to what you do. Maybe your primary sector uh, uh, revenue will start going down, but then your s secondary sector revenue will start going up. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this works. Um, healthcare, this improves the health, thus productivity and happiness of your population. Environment, the funds from this post will keep clean up uh, population and help develop new arable land from the total available in your country. That can then be used to produce first tier resources. So again, the economy is split up into three different tiers, and this is reflected in your budget tab. Um, and then propaganda, this will help generate more support from the population as it did in Superpower 2. 
and then infrastructure is roads, bridges, airports, waters, uh, waterways, uh, electricity, etc. It has a direct impact on economic sectors, production, and improvements. This might have to be made to cut certain programs or certain sectors of your country. In you can actually see down here, so it does show you what propaganda has consequences. So we actually see what goes into it. Maybe it's going to be like what goes into it over here. Um, and then we have consequences. So that's going to be very interesting uh, to see what the consequences of propaganda is in Superpower 3. In order to prioritize others, long-term gains or short-term needs. In Superpower 3, as in reality, the economic aspects of geopolitics are often the basis and ultimate outcome of decisions. Lastly, actually, you see right here, this is your political news tab. So you can, if you guys remember, it was kind of like a news ticker at the at the bottom of uh, of Superpower Two. It was kind of like a news ticker. Um, so essentially, that seems to be right here. So, so you have your political, you have your demography, you have your economic, and then you have your military uh, notifications right here. So it looks like that the U S is under 11% approval. And then that France is moving politically to the right. So, um, so France is moving politically to the right. It's going to be very interesting to see how that works in uh, superpower three guys, go ahead and leave a like subscribe to the channel. If you are new, if you guys are ready for some superpower three i will be streaming it next week so it says it comes out october 7th it comes out to all of you on october 7th and we will definitely be doing a multiplayer match that day however on october 6th i will be able to preview it and possibly do some multiplayer maybe some multiplayer they're not only sending it to me but they're sending it to a lot of other content creators i've already heard from several friends uh content creator friends of mine that they have received keys um, and, uh, so all of us are going to be playing it on October 6th on the morning of October 6th. So do look forward to that. Um, if you guys are, if you are a YouTuber out there and you guys are ready for some superpower three and you have received the key for it, definitely do contact me and, uh, or say something down in the comments below. And I would love to have you on and we can play some multiplayer on day one. So Guys, go ahead and uh, uh, check out the live stream for Superpower Three. Do not miss it. It is a not, this is this is going to be the first gameplay that you ever see of Superpower Three, and uh, I am I am absolutely ready for next week. So, guys, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I will see you guys uh, next week in Superpower Three. Thank you guys so much for watching, and take care.